We got a 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee. And I've already pulled the dash out on this. Well, this thing came in with um, it's blowing heat all the time. It has no cool air, no cold air. Um, so, Rich, I took these blend these uh, blend door motors out. You know why it was in in the vehicles installed because I thought this gear was these gears were broken. These gears are broke on this thing but the reason they broke is these doors are jammed up inside this case they will not move on the drivers or the, well this would be the driver's side the other would be the passenger side they are just completely jammed up and that's what's breaking the, that little gear in them and well you can see this this little door right here this is a different door for the duck but it's supposed to have a seal around all that that's just all melted so I'm thinking that seal on these blend doors are probably melted and it's let that door jam up in there um, so I'm gonna take that off I've already ordered a uh, new housing here we're gonna put that on that's some seals I was talking about on them doors there now I'll make a video of me installing all this because there wasn't much information on anywhere that I could find on removing this it's it was quite a job, but I'll try to put it, cut it, and edit, and put it in order how it comes all out, the dash, and everything. And I'll go ahead and remove this housing and get that swapped out. Okay, before you remove the battery cable, move these seats, both seats, forward as far as they go. We're going to get these rear bolts that hold this console in place. So there'll be one of these on each side. Right here is a um, is a little cover. <clears throat> My light flipped. You can kind of see where that cover went. Where there's a little cover, you just take you a pick and 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 uh, pop that out, and then there's a. Uh, a 10 millimeter bolt right in here there's one on each side and once you get them removed on both sides then move both seats all the way back as far as they go and then you can d disconnect the power before we go any further before you do anything else you need to unhook the power supply and I'm just coming over here and uh, removing that 13 millimeter and then removing these two uh, connectors here off of this stud and put them out of the way where they can't contact because we're going to have an airbag out and our airbags out okay you're going to have to remove the glove box so you'll just unlatch it usually they have a right here on the side they usually have a little cable that runs down to a clip and you can disengage that clip by pushing it down and removing it this one don't have one it's done broke i guess and then you'll push let me get my light around here somehow then you will push in on the side the side parts here of the glove box. See how that, that freed up there? Right here. And you'll do the same thing on this side. You'll free it up. It'll come down and it'll just unhook. It'll unhook from... See, it's got these little hooks on the bottom. It just unhooks from these. This part right here. 
real simple. Passenger side. I'm gonna remove this sound insulator from the lower part of the dash. It does have a connector here. It has two of them. Um, a little small one here and then this larger one here. Um, so you'll unhook them. Then it has three push clips right here, one here and one here. And they clip in under, right up under here. Passenger side. Remove this lower trim piece right here. It just pops out. Remove this lower kick panel. This pops out, there's a clip on it. And then remove this side trim piece right here. It'll pop on out, it's got clips on it. In the passenger side, I'm gonna remove this plastic cover here. Um, it has four seven millimeter screws on it down here. And these little bumper stops right here, it's got a Torx screw in each one of them, T20. Let's go inside of that. <clears throat> Just go inside of, inside of that and remove them. Then this will pull straight out. It's got, it does have a couple clips on it. And then there will be a connector back here for this little uh, glove box light switch. Okay, you're going to want to remove this lower trim panel right here. It just pops off and clips back here in the back. Right there, that yellow one. And then you'll remove this lower trim down here. It just pops off of that. And that right there cover just pops off. Which you'll pull this weather strip out of the way. And then once you get that done, this right here, little sound insulator goes up under here. And it's held on with these, uh, a light. It's held on with these push clips in here in front. It's real easy. Just pull them out. And that little, that's the wiring connector for the, the light. Now on this driver's side, going to need to remove this knee airbag. Um, it's got two nuts. It's got two nuts like this. This is where the studs on this on this airbag will poke through. You have to go from the back side and remove them. It was uh, 10 millimeter. Um, when you get it pulled out, it's the wiring connector. On the back side, see that orange clip? That just gets you something and pull that clip straight up. That will unlock that and then you can pull that straight off. Okay, well, you'll need to pull this panel here out. It just clips in around the steering column. We'll just pop it out on both sides and pull it. Um, this panel here on the clip probably after this one i i said there was a, a bolt here holding it in on this this side this side does not have a bolt that holds it on and it's just there's just one right here and then there's three on the bottom okay remove this this uh knee panel here it's held on with two seven millimeter screws one there one one over here behind that cover on the bottom you'll have one here one or one here maybe three of them I can't remember but anyway and then uh, you'll just detach this the hood cable off of it. it it just slides back there's a slot that goes into and uh, you just release a clip and slide it back it'll pop out and then there's a couple of connectors up in here that you'll have to unplug. You need to remove this little cross brace here. It's held on with two eight millimeter bolts. 
on the steering column you'll have to unplug this electrical connector right here that goes up it goes in this here right behind this uh, cover and plugs into that switch up there um, I don't know if I can show you where that plugs in or not probably not but it goes in here you'll you'll when you get your head up under it you'll see it it's it's this yellow connector just push this pin this release pull it out and then they'll clip here that you got to remove from the um, from the uh, dash or I don't really remember where that was hooked up at but anyway you get the idea okay we're gonna work on removing this steering column I put a box under this thing just to kind of keep this uh, steady for me now underneath on the bottom the steering shaft or the steering column the lower part of it it's hooked to this steering shaft right here it's a t45 torx boat that needs to be removed i've got it loosened out as you can see maybe you can see yeah and then once you get that loosened up there are four there's one uh, boats to hold this column up one here one here one up here and one on the other side I don't know if you can see it I've got them loosened up you can see how that's moving now the splines that go into this bottom end here of this coupler I think them will go on any direction so you need to really pay attention to where your position of your wheel is your steering wheel you know if you can even mark it mark it as you come out with this column and get under there and mark that 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 spline and mark the uh, coupler here where that goes in together that would make it so much easier to do when you go back to line everything up I had a real hard time of getting that to go back in place and I actually had to come out here to where the uh, where that shaft comes through the uh, firewall and hooks to this intermediate inter intermediate steering shaft and then undo it right here where I can move that other shaft around to get it to slide in so if you got a friend that can help you at least with with this or, or stick a box under it like this right here to kind of keep it up as you're doing that that would help out greatly try not to rotate this steering wheel try to keep it centered in the position that uh you removed it in it's got a clock spring in it and uh you take a chance on breaking that clock spring if you try spinning this wheel on the driver's side under where the steering column came out at there is a a bolt it looks like this it looks like that is a 10 millimeter but it sits in behind in behind this bracket here and screws in from that way and right there you can see the the end of it so you have to get behind this and get that boat out on the shift handle this little cover here on top has to be removed and it you'll just grab it work your work your hand up under the edge of this chrome strip pop it off just like that it's got a clip here a clip here and a clip here and there's, there's like a little connector under there when you go back with it make sure that's all lined up okay on this shift handle 
there's a T30 Torx screw that needs to be removed. Then that will just, once you get that removed, that should just pop right off. I know it'll pop off because I just had it off. What the heck? Maybe this bolt's got to come all the way out. Okay, remove the bolt all the way out. Then it'll come off. On the top of the console, this little panel will have to come up, up and off. Just use uh, something like this and just pop it loose. Just go work around it. Pop it loose from the clips. It'll slide up. It'll have two connectors that hook in from the bottom to unplug them. On the console, on each side of this console, it has these... Um, panels that go along the side of it they just clip in this one this passenger side is loose see these clips that's on that and they just they just pop out you just take both sides off here on the passenger side the front of this console there is a connector that plugs in right up in here so that'll have to be uh, removed on the passenger side still working on this console here this wiring here has to, connector has to be undone and then it's got some clips here that you'll need to uh, just pull them out now this wire here runs up under the seat, so I left it attached because it goes down under the carpet. You um, know, like when we when we pull this console back, we'll just pull it back as far as we can and get it out of the way. Because if we try to remove the whole thing, well, it's going to cost more time. And that's trying to get avoid a lot of time here. And then uh, right here on the side, it's got another one of these bolts, 10 millimeters. Okay, on the driver's side, the front of the console here, <clears throat> you'll need to uh, unhook this, if I can get this light to work, this connector right here. It has to be unplugged and remove this bolt right here. Okay, with this console <clears throat> slid back just a little, we'll need to unhook this shift cable. Um, there's a uh, plastic kind of a, a connection point here for it. You'll just release these clips, pop this open, and that cable just inserts into that and then snaps here and locks in place. Next, this wiring that was underneath the console, that all needs to be uh, gotten loosened. You've got a ground, a ground, Right here, uh, these connectors. Then when they clip in, they'll clip in at different spots. Now this wiring, this is aftermarket stuff, so you won't have that on it. Um, and here, in the, that wire runs underneath this this little module here. But it will pull out from underneath it. You just got to work it around a little. 
and then a connector here on this module and then uh, another little connector right here and that'll pull out and that'll come out with the dash that wiring there okay we're going to work on these a trim panels now you'll have one here on the driver's side one on the passenger passenger side which is already removed what the what it'll do is it just clips in you'll probably just pull this weather strip out a little here then you'll get your hands behind it here and it it'll pop out it's got clips back here now i ought to have a tether hooked to it right here and that keeps that thing from slinging out in case the airbag goes off because the airbag is sitting right here up inside this with that that tether will slide down in a little slot and all you'll do is release a clip and then slide it out of that and then you'll pull up on this and then little tabs right here on the bottom slide down into that dash also also these little clips here have to be pulled out for these little vent tubes right here We're going to remove this upper vent panel right here. It's held on with a series of clips. It does have an electrical connector plugs in right here that will have to be removed. You'll just take something and just go around the edges of it until you break them all them all them clips loose on it. Remove the instrument cluster the instrument cluster here. Seven millimeter, seven millimeter, and then there's one going straight up through here. Remove this one connector. Okay, we're gonna remove this this center control panel right here. And it just it's just held in with clips. So you, all you do is grab it around the sides. You may have to use something to help you and just unclip it. Pull it out. There's one connector back here. Remove it and get it out of your way. At the center of the dash here you're going to remove this this little tray right here it's got four seven millimeter bolts that bolt two on top two on the bottom down here and then there's a few connectors that have to be unplugged from it you'll remove it out of the way then you'll remove the radio which has got four seven millimeter bolts that hold it in place right here I didn't remove mine all the way, I just flipped it down like that where I could get to them two nuts that was back there behind it. And that center bin here, it's got two nuts. That's the reason we're taking it out. It's got two nuts back in, back in there that holds it onto the case. Okay, on the driver's side, you'll have to uh, so the wiring connector that hooks to this actuator for the side up here. Let me see if I can get my light straightened out here a little bit. That's kind of tough. I'll point at it. There's a con wiring connector. It plugs in right on that little motor right there. There's a connector up where, the, where it connects it. And then there's a yeah, fall. Then there's a um, little wire that runs around the ductwork and hooks into a little sensor back here. There's the wire. It hooks into a sensor back here. That'll have to be unplugged. Unclip that harness. It just clips in. And then this this big connector right here will have to be unplugged. It's, it's just one of them ones you flip out and push the lever. Still on the passenger side, this little ductwork right here, it just snaps onto that upper housing. One right here I forgot about. This is on the passenger side, still on the passenger side. This one right here. That'll have to be unplugged. Um, and this right, this one here hanging down, this goes to the um, 
that glove compartment light, I believe. On the passenger side here, we're going through, and we're gonna work, I'm gonna work on these uh, wiring electrical connectors. Now this right here duct work piece attaches to that case right there where that white flap, that door is right there. And it has a connector, sensor connector. I'll put this light down. Right here on the back side that I couldn't get to to unplug it. So I just pried this lip here and just popped that thing out where I could get to it and, and plug that connector up. But that'll just go up, just go up from underneath like that. And pop it on, plug that connector up to it. While you got it in here, you can move it around. And then you'll just, there's a bunch of wiring connectors up in here. You'll see, you'll see them hanging down. You'll have to unhook the ones from, from them, from all these little motors. I hope you can see that. I'm trying to hold a light, a camera, and do this all at the same time. But anyway, I mean, if you, if you, if you think you need to, you can just, you can mark all these wires to where they go, but they should only just plug in one thing. Like that one goes there. Uh, that this one probably goes to this other motor up here. This will go to like this uh, blower resistor that's down here on the bottom, right there. That'll go to that little ductwork sensor. This is probably goes to it. There's another little motor back here. It's for the research door that'll plug into. Uh, I believe this right here stuff goes down to the uh, kick panel under here, so we don't have to worry about that right now. But you'll just just grab that wiring and trace all them wires back to where they hook up to this case, because they all will have to come out. Um, there's one down here. I think that's still hooked to the... Um, to the, we'll have to come back to that one. I think that's on the console part. Um, then you'll want to unhook them right here. This great big connector right here. It just, it just flips. This thing here just flips up on it, flips down on it. Same thing with this one. Where does it go at? It goes right there into this white little module. Right here, get caught around here. It goes right there, and it's got one of them flip deals on it too. That was tripped. Just plug it in there. Then pull that down, so you'll push up on it. Same with this, and you'll go down with it. Then you'll have this antenna cable here. It just unclips. There's a little clip right here that unclips it. Hope you can see that and all that light wasn't shining. But anyway, just, just fill around, you'll see them all where the wires go at. But I'm pretty sure that's about it on the wiring here on this side. Okay, let me go through the, um, the mounting on this dash. You'll need to remove, there's two right here these are 13 millimeter there's two here there's a little seven millimeter right here there's a 13 millimeter right here that bolts in and then there's one on the other side and then on the other side I'll show you them too but right here where this cluster is there is uh, two that go up in here. You might be able to see the holes, which I've done remove the bolts. You can see them two holes right back there. And then behind the radio, there is a nut. There's a stud sticking out right there. You'll we'll have a nut go in there. That stud sticking out on this side. A nut will go in there. And then behind that little tray. Let's sink this radio back in place here. 
There is a, a stud sticking out right there. And that nut will go on, one nut will go on there. And then one right there. And then on the passenger side, let's go around to the passenger side here. There's two on the end here, one here, then that little seven millimeter there. And then there's a nut right here on this bracing where it hooks to this case. And I believe that's it as far as uh, that goes. And once you get them out, then your dash will be ready to come out. No, I forgot. I forgot about one of these. It's got a up here on the top of the dash <clears throat> where this vent cover came off. It's got a 10 millimeter bolt that runs down through the back here, right back through here. Hope you can see that. That has to come out too. I forgot about that one. Tough for a 55 year old. Yeah, let's just set it up close to that dash. That's good, and I can adjust it around where I need it. Sure. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, the evaporator core tubes. And the heater cord tubes right here, these tubes right here running up through here, they go into this um, this uh, firewall here on the front. <clears throat> and come out over here, but there is a, this is a two panel. There's like a two panels in here. So all this cow panel and all this stuff's got to come out. I think even this big sound insulator's got to come out of it. Let's uh, take, it, take it apart. You wipe your arms, it's got to come off. They're uh, 15 millimeter. Okay, you'll have to get these, this little trim piece loose here. It's held on by clips right here. There's three of them. Well, that's what it looks like. Pop straight up. Okay, here's a look down here. This is the wiper motor and the wiper transmission. Them tubes, you probably won't be able to see them, maybe. They're down, you can see them down there where they bolt in. Well, we're gonna have to remove this uh, wiper motor and this wiper transmission. And we're gonna to have to remove this, hopefully remove this sound barrier deal here. 
this big thing here that goes all the way across. Looks like it's got some I don't know, we'll just have to uh, start taking stuff apart and see how it comes apart. It has a 10 millimeter bolt down in here. And one up here in the front. One right here in the front. Slides kind of sideways, but we got a connector. Ten millimeters here on this bracket. Some bolts right here on the side. There's one on each side. They look to be ten millimeter. Remove the engine cover out of the way. Then you can get to this boat better now. And them going in through the front, going in through the front side here, and them side bolts right there where the end of my light is. There's a 10 millimeter, and there's one over here that I've done removed. Point at it right there. There was two. I'm going through the front here again. There was, it was two here. There's one here, one here that I removed. Then back in the back here, I think that one has to be removed. Maybe that one. That one. There's one underneath this line here. Bolts in. I think them has to be removed. There's one right there, maybe. Okay, I was trying to get this sound insulator out in this bracket. I just noticed it's got two 10 millimeter right here. I think we can remove this bracket out of the way it pulls straight up. That's that bracket. It's held on with these two. Got something to be up over here, maybe 
a wine or clip or something. wiring harness for the wiper motor connector. And that's what I was going after. Were the um, lines for the evaporator core hooked to and where the hoses for the heater core hooked to. Um, so I'll we'll need to uh, We'll need to reclaim the, the air conditioner or the Freon out of it before I take them lines loose. Um, not sure what all is going to be involved in removing that case, but I know there looks like a bolt right here, a nut. And there's probably some other ones around here. Well, first I'm going to get these lines loose. I'm just pulling the Freon out of the system. Um, if, if you try to do this by yourself, you can go by any shop and they should be able to, uh, reclaim the, uh, or, you know, pull the fr old Freon out for you. I'm trying to get these evaporator tube lines off. Um, there's a bracket right here. I'm going to try to remove this uh, 10 millimeter nut right there if it'll focus right there. Let's see if that'll give me a little slack to uh, pull these lines out. Okay, I'm over here on the driver's side. That Pulling that nut off of that bracket didn't help. So we're going to have to remove these lines right here and here. Let's see. Get rid of this bracket right here. The back side of it. That'll be good enough. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this uh, outside air housing here. It's got a 10 millimeter nut there and one here that I can see. I don't I'll just have to pull them off and see if that's all there is. Okay, going to work on trying to get the inside case loose. Uh, there's a nut right in the center down there. Uh, I'll remove that one. There's one there, it looks like. I don't know how many this thing's got in it, to be honest with you. Surely more than two.
So I'll remove them and I'll just keep looking for some more nuts. Okay, I removed them two nuts. I thought it might have more than that in it, but that's all it holds this thing in. It's two nuts. So it's got me hooked up over there. Let's see what that is. Okay, it's a um, head tube, or maybe that's the AC drain. But it's only held on by a little tie strap. Okay, going through the driver's side here, on that case, there's that rubber hose or tube, and it's just held on by a white tie strap. I'm gonna cut that tie strap. I try to get my hand under here and pull that tote tube off. It's kinda hard to do here. Anyway, you get the idea. Cause I'm gonna, probably gonna have to have, no, oh, maybe there it comes. There it come off. And I think that is the water drain. goes down in through there huh, what a weird design okay now we can pull this case all the way out now start taking it apart take these little bitty screws out around it There was one here, and another one somewhere around in here. Be a couple of them. Here in the back. Like that bottom hooks in. A couple of clips right here. Push down on that. Push down on that one. Heater core is going to have to come out. Let's see what we got here. Three millimeter. Them off. Okay, I'll call Riley and see if they got one on the book. I'm sure they do. Okay. 
Okay, we'll do this. Good old mess. We have some O-rings in here. I may need to call Dodge and see about some new O-rings. Boy, that suck. Put that all back together. Go to leak it. Over a couple dollars worth of O-rings. Heater core. Straight out like that. That's the evaporator core for the air conditioner. Okay. Hello. So I can transfer. Yes. So I can transfer this padding. Transfer this padding over, pull it off, glue it back on here. And I'll just take my time, try and pull this upper seal off, glue it back on here. I think that's all I need to do. Then I'll slide my stuff back in place. Here's a better look at the out back side of that case where that blend door is at. I can free it up if I just push down on it. But that seal is what's doing it. Yeah, let me get this off of here. See that seal? It's melted like. And remember that heater core sits right there, right next to these, these things. So over time, I guess that heat off that heater core melts them. Crazy. And here's the same way. That just glued itself. And then it breaks that gear. But I have seen I have seen people just put them gears on there and they work just fine, so I don't know if that's what's causing all the breakage or what. Okay, we got all that installation stuff swapped over. Transferred these little studs over to the new one. It's got two kind of a hook type deals that hook into the bottom of this other part. Put that in there. Get that lined up. Snap it back in place and then install them. What are those three or four screws? Slide the heater core in. Back in through here. One screw for this little lid that holds it in. O rings, clamps, and that will be ready to install. Actually, there's only two of them little T20 screws that hold this to the other part of the case. The little bottom hooks in. And then it has these two screw places right here. The other two that I was looking at was the one that hold these, held these uh, actuators in. Okay, remember we just had two, uh, two nuts 
that went on the outside and don't forget to hook this AC drain up and it just had a tie strap on it. Now the um, I'm going to back and record the dash the dash replacement and I'll try to put it in order how it come back how it come apart and what you need to do it'll just take a bunch of cutting and editing and, and everything but anyway if this video helped you out at all <clears throat> please uh, like and su subscribe kind of help me out a lot thanks for watching